Believe it or not, there's a lot more to the hobby of RC planes than destroying said RC planes. In fact, if you're interested in getting into the hobby, this video is for you. Let's get right into 10 things no one tells you about flying RC airplanes. Number one, you're flying a drone, not an airplane. This is something you'll very quickly learn once you step foot into the lovely hobby of RC aircraft. When someone approaches you flying at a park, they'll ask about your drone, not your clearly not a drone plane. They'll also probably ask if you have a camera on your scale Piper Pawnee. Thank God the FAA views us for what we are, RC pilots, right? Wrong. The FAA sees that transmitter in your hand and suddenly you're flying a militarized drone capable of deleting and yeeting anything that breathes. Hobbyists have been pushing for years to be lumped into a separate category from drone pilots because regulating us the same way is unfair. If you're an OG, you also probably remember the fight to call drones quadcopters or multirotors as God intended, but the media quickly pushed the term drone down everyone's throat. Now, hearing the word quadcopter in public is about as common as Mitch McConnell remembering what needs to be said. Number 2. Wing loading is a useless tool. Wing cube loading is useful, however. We're doing a full video on this in a few weeks because this concept is very difficult to limit to one point, but the long story short of it is this. If you've spent any time on forums or even our own channel in our early reviews, oops, we make mistakes too, you'll probably hear people discussing wing loading on its own and using it to explain how it might make an aircraft perform. The key here is that wing loading on its own means absolutely nothing unless you're comparing two similar models that have essentially the same size wing area, and the closer in size they are, the more accurate the comparison will be. For example, let's look at the first turbo timber. It had a wing loading of 13.45 ounces a square foot. Then let's look at a full scale Cessna 172, which has a wing loading of 225.3 ounces a square foot. Based on the information we just gave you, the full scale Cessna should fly like it was made out of steel, piloted by the fattest man in America with a nuclear bomb underneath, yet it doesn't. This is because Reynolds number scales weird, some other math we don't understand, and George Bush. But don't fear, wing cube loading solves this issue. It tells you how an aircraft will feel in flight regarding if it'll feel floaty, up through if it flies like a brick, all using a straightforward number that translates even when comparing something like a UMX timber to a giant scale carbon cup. To clarify, many other things affect how a plane flies, such as tail size, wing plan form, airfoil, among others, but when we've used wing cube loading in recent reviews, it's been solely to compare how different airplanes with the same mission, generally bush flying, will fly. If you're interested in learning more about this concept, stay tuned for our upcoming video. Number 3. It's illegal to fly in a park sometimes. With new remote ID regulations, flying in a park in the US is only doable with a remote ID module in your airplane, alongside using apps like Before You Fly and Air Control Before Taking Off in order to also verify if the area you're flying in doesn't have any full-scale airspace restrictions. If the app doesn't show that there's airspace around you, just fly with the remote ID module. If there is, the apps show you what altitude you can fly up to in whatever location you try to fly from. And if you want approval to fly recreationally, so long as the location isn't restricted down to zero feet, you must use an app to get what's called a Low Altitude Authorization and Notification Capability, aka LAN-C authorization. The only place you can fly without remote ID is an FAA recognized identification area or FRIA. There still are many RC flight sites and clubs awaiting for FRIA authorization, but hundreds have been approved at the time of writing this video. It's a bummer our hobby has went down this path. Number 4. Crashing is the beginning, not the end. Looking in from the outside, crashing is the end of an aircraft, and sometimes it actually is if you yeet it hard enough. But what most people don't see is that this is the beginning of an addictive cycle that lasts many their whole lives. Once you crash, that means it's time to repair, and while the fuselage is in two, why not upgrade the battery tray with the Morgan Mills battery tray? See where we're going with this? Flying is just part of our hobby, and a lot of people spend more time building than flying, and there's nothing wrong with that. However you want to enjoy the hobby is fine, so long as you don't think crashing is the end game. Number 5. RC planes aren't as fragile as you'd think. Cue massive debate in the comments. If anything, our channel proves that these planes can take a lot more than most would think, at least some of them. Unless you really, and I mean really dumb thumb it. 95% of crashes are repairable, and even if they're not, it's extremely unlikely that all the electronics are ruined as well. So, go scratch build something, flight test kid. Even if you're not the glue it and forget about it type, most aircraft are sold alongside a plethora of replacement parts. So what's our point in saying all this? Have fun with your planes. Go buy a die-cast model if you want a hangar queen, but go out and fly the radio-controlled one and don't be afraid to push your limits. If anything, you'll learn something, and as a bonus, you're benefiting our economy. Number 6. It's more of a social hobby for most. It's more fun with friends. There's a lot of people in this hobby who don't take it all that seriously, and that's okay. 
For many, it's a way to make friends or get out on the weekend. And on the flip side, this hobby is best enjoyed with friends. There's so many things that can go wrong with our aircraft, and nothing beats a warm sunny day and watching your friend's aircraft become one with the earth. The laughter you'll share, the memories you'll make, an aircraft you'll shatter make this a really difficult hobby to compete with as far as fun factor. Plus, you can always do events or competitions with friends when the hobby sometimes feels like a bore. If anyone has any suggestions on how to make friends, please let us know down below. Asking for a friend. Number 7. Anyone can do it. There's a phrase I like to use when I have full-scale students who get into a learning plateau and feel like they are looking up Mount Everest trying to learn how to fly an airplane. With enough time, money, and motivation, anyone can do it. And this is just as applicable to RC aviation too. If you're thinking about flying RC but don't think you can, trust us, anyone can do it. We've seen everyone from four-year-olds to absolute dinosaurs that shouldn't have even driven to the field without a caretaker succeed in this hobby. All it takes is a little bit of time and money. If money is a problem, go find a local AMA club and inquire about training nights. Most clubs offer a training night where they provide everything from an aircraft for you to fly to an instructor who assumes the responsibility if the aircraft doesn't make it home. Now you've got no excuses left for giving it a shot. Number 8. You don't have to spend all your money, but you will. For $20, you can make an aircraft that flies. This hobby is expensive as you make it. For whatever reason, we've gotten a lot of comments that people disagree with us on this. We promise you though, that no matter how much willpower you have, eventually your hobby budget is going to creep up further and further. There are so many cool things that you can try in this hobby like FPV or blimp racing that eventually will keep you up at night without trying. Or, time-saving tools like a prop reamer or a faster charger will catch your eye the next time you're at a hobby shop. Number 9. You will become a hoarder. We can't tell you how many friends' places we go over to the first time and remark how clean their place is. I mean, legit spotless. That is, until you make it to their workshop. This is like a disease in model aviation. You have a workbench full of parts for next week's project, another for the following week, a bench of miscellaneous stuff left at the field no one's going to claim, and even possibly a dead rat in your dusty chaos. These things happen. This hobby will turn the most organized into borderline hoarder level of pat racking. Some people rise above and become organized, but for a lot of us, our workshops look like a homeless camp. Number 10. There's no one right way to do things. RC planes as a hobby is really a big game of problem solving. One guy takes a broken in two wing and rips off all the covering and repairs the broken wood. Another might duct tape it back together. A third would jump on it. Anytime there's a problem to solve in our hobby, 99% of the time, asking a friend for help will yield a solution you didn't think of. There are so many different ways to accomplish the same task, but what's important is finding the balance between time, money, and durability of your problem-solving techniques. And what's even more important is to ignore anyone who's telling you that you're fixing your plane the wrong way. Sure, give them the respect of listening, but if you decide you want to duct tape your plane back together, fuck it, this is America. As a bonus, here's number 11. This hobby is as complex as you make it. You can design a solar plane that'll fly to the moon and back, all while providing food for children in Africa, if you'd like. Or you can plug your battery into your bare bones carbon cub, take off, and go for a flight. There's a ton of technology for this hobby, most of which is unnecessary to have a good time. Eventually though, when you're feeling a little burnt out flying in a circle, messing around with Ardu Pilot, experimental wing designs, or reinventing the propeller can be a great way to reignite your passion for the hobby. There's a ton we couldn't cover in this video, and if you have more tips, go ahead and let us know down below. As a quick channel update, congrats to Chris Bush for winning our September photo contest on our Discord with this awesome shot of their T7A over a moody Great Britain countryside. If you want to participate in our October contest, join our Discord for a fun, positive, supportive community and submit your best airplane photos taken in October on there. The winner gets a free limited edition sticker and has their photo featured in both the video and in an annual tail heavy community calendar. If you enjoy watching people yeet and delete aircraft, go ahead and give this video a thumbs up. Or maybe hit subscribe if you're interested in debunking some myths around wing loading and wing cube loading. Happy landings, bounce one on for us, and we'll see you next week with a new upload.